Now, in today's uh, radiopathological correlation series that we have, we are conducting in DAMS, where we are having with me Dr. Sanjeev, uh, who is a senior pathologist, and uh, I am Dr. Sumer, I am a radiologist. We are looking to correlate pathologies and their radiological finding and pathological finding together so that we, we can have a deeper learning and we can look for uh, you know concept based questions so uh, today we'll share a case and I'll, I'll do the radiological findings and associated radiological findings and I'll invite Dr. Sanjeev to give his comments on the pathological finding of a disease now this is a 37 year old male who has history of flank pain and there were some renal regions on ultrasound for further evaluation CT scan was advised today CT scan is the standard of care for most of the renal pathologies so that is the next logical step to do so if we see this CT scan image this is a contrast enhanced CT image and you can see this is the liver you can see part of the gallbladder part of the pancreas this is the inferior vena cava aorta and you can see both the kidneys are showing areas of normal enhancement this is normal enhancement that you will see after giving dye but you can see multiple hypodense areas these ones these are dark most of which are totally dark totally hypodense with no septae imperceptible walls no internal contents but if you look at this lesion in this kidney this has enhancing contents in it and look at this lesion this has thick solid septation and enhancing content look at this this is not a cyst this is more solid more enhancing and similarly this so now if I look at this image again I see the patient has bilateral renal cystic disease but all of them are not cyst some of them are more solid looking on CT with more solid component enhancing component septations and that make me suspect they are of more complex nature maybe of neoplastic etiology so here before I go on to give my differential diagnosis I would say that whenever we look at a renal cyst on CT as a radiologist we are supposed to classify them using a system called as BOSNAC this BOSNAC classification is on, on a CT scan this is how we classify renal cystic disease on CT now I, I show you example now this is the Bosnac category 1 cyst Bosnac category 1 cyst is a simple cyst with an imperceptible wall well defined rounded cyst with no malignant potential very often we see such a cyst incidentally this is this cyst you cannot see the wall no septum, no internal architecture simple fluid containing cyst well defined rounded no malignant potential I would say Bosnac category 1 cyst this is similar to many of the cysts we saw in our patient however sometimes we have a cyst which is having a few thin less than one millimeter septae or thin calcification or sometimes they have high attenuation because of proteinaceous or hemorrhagic content this would be called as Bosna category 2 again this is a benign thing and we will call them as a minimally complex Bosna category 2 but do not forget there is a category 2F in which you have slight more number of septae minimal thickening of the nodula minimum nodularity or thick calcification or the cyst hypertense cyst is of more than 3 cm in size we would say Bosnac category 2F here there is some malignant potential but not too much but as compared to Bosnac category 2 which has no malignant potential this is a slightly more complex cyst category 3 if I see a thick nodular septa or some enhancement like in this case we can see in this cyst there is a nodule showing enhancement this becomes category 3 this has 55 percent malignant potential and and if you see a clearly malignant lesion like in this case you can see a exophytic mass from the left kidney solid thick irregular walls necrotic center I, I know this is uh, stranding in the surrounding fascia we know this is looking definitely like a malignant lesion I'll say Bosnia category 4 so with this background if I look back at our case and we discuss the patient that we were seeing here we have a mixture of images where we have some category 1 cysts and some category 3 and 4 lesions so I know there is a mixture of a cystic disease with malignant lesions so wh what disease do we think when we have multi -cyst multiple cysts in both kidneys normal renal intervening parenchyma and some neoplasms so one of the differential that comes to my mind would be 
VHL, Von Hippel Lindau disease, where you have association with cystic disease and RCCs. And another differential would be uh, maybe tuberous sclerosis complex, in which this is possible, but I will keep it lower down because I don't see any fat attenuation in any of the renal lesions. Now, with this background, I'll invite Dr. Sanjeev to give his comments as a pathologist on this case. Yes, since uh, on the CT it was thought to be malignant, definitely you know surgeon would have performed a surgery, excision of the kidney or the tumor. So what we have got is grossly we have got the whole kidney here and yes looking at this I can see definitely this, this, this one is the normal renal parenchyma you are seeing this is the normal cortex I am seeing and this is the normal medulla and this is what is your one of the calyx major calyx is coming and probably it's going to join into the pelvis here okay and what you're seeing here white color is the one which is the medullary part of the kidney okay and what you are seeing correlating with the CT finding was what we can correlate is there are multiple cysts I can see one of them here and there are few cysts here also which can be seen here and you are seeing one something a big mass here which is definitely not appearing like a normal cortex or normal medulla and so this is probably the one thing which you know you were seeing on CT which had more of a Bosnic class 4 the so called and look at this one more here I am seeing very similar texture on gross compared to this but this is also having a cyst inside there is a cystic lesion in the center surrounded by some some uh, what do you call I would definitely like to call it as mass here and you are seeing what of course there is some mass which is multifocal I am seeing see in the same kidney there is no continuation this is one focus this is another focus and probably this one also at this point from this angle I cannot comment on this but probably this also which is spreading towards the fascia probably the renal, uh, renal fascia so this is what I can see grossly it is and slightly this one look at this you can see some hemorrhagic areas here and the yellowish one are little bit of necrotic areas so hemorrhage is there necrosis is there and some cysts are there which are totally not having anything basically benign like cysts and some of the cysts are also present in probably this areas or a tumor or a mass which is having both hemorrhage and necrosis I would definitely like to go and take a sections from these areas which appear to be a tumorous one tumor tumor like condition at least so now let me look yes this is the one image which I have taken a low power image probably this is from this area that is at the junction I have taken an image at the junction of normal as well as such suspicious areas and what I can see in this image is some normal glomeruli I hope you can see both these two are normal glomeruli here is also one glomeruli and multiple tubules these are normal tubules that I am seeing here the pink ones are the normal tubules I can see and in the center suddenly I am seeing something very haphazardly arranged very very clear cells and only the nuclei it is very white clear in uh, appearance as compared to the normal tubules so there is this is something different let me have a look at the higher magnification of this area then we can definitely see something more yes so what I am seeing in the higher magnification is there is no normal architecture in this that is if it was a tubule it should have been in the center there should have been a lumen I am not seeing any lumen so it has lost the normal architecture of kidney and what I am seeing is absolutely clear areas absolutely clear areas and I am seeing a nucleus with a prominent nucleoli although I am not seeing it very big very large but definitely if you look at the nucleoli you can see some of the nucleoli here so looking at this we can make a diagnosis of clear cell RCC now going back to correlate with what we have got on CT and also on the histology and the gross finding patient had multiple cysts definitely on gross also I am seeing multiple cysts some of the cysts were having some enhancement probably this was that cyst and there were some which were absolutely not cyst probably they were the truly frankly malignant areas which were seen on the CT and multiple cysts with a this the diagnosis we have made on biopsy on histology is a clear cell RCC clear cell RCC so a 
final diagnosis would have been a clear cell RCC with bilateral multiple cysts in the kidney and yes definitely we can think of either a von Hippelinder or a tuberous sclerosis very rarely again tuberous sclerosis is not so common if I have to stick my neck out I will stick with the von Hippelinder syndrome uh, disease rather than tuberous sclerosis because in tuberous sclerosis more of angiomyolipomas are associated rather than the RCCs although RCCs are reported to be associated with tuberous sclerosis. So in this definitely we would like to ask more history because one hippel endow can have some more tumors like hemangioblastomas, there can be cysts anywhere else like in pancreas, there can associated pheochromocytomas look for venile mandelic acid in, uh, in excretion in urine or probably you can look for st straight away look for the blood pressure of the patient, hypertensive, severe hypertension again in favor of that and you can have retinal hemangioblastomas, loss of vision or some history like that definitely makes a diagnosis. Definitely ultimately we have to do genetic analysis to make a to come at the final conclusion. So now let I will I'll, I'll uh, hand over to Dr. Sumer. I, I think Sajeev before we go for genetic analysis if we do a MRI brain in this patient it will give us definite clues and uh, uh, one hip pull disease associated with uh, cerebellar hemangioplastomas usually infratentorial you will see hemangioplastomas while tuberous sclerosis has a very typical appearance on MRI and CT we see calcified subependymal nodules or you may have uh, cortical tubers which are evident on CT brain but in, in, in this patient unfortunately we did not have the neurological imaging and uh, we have to stick to these two differential diagnoses and uh, with this we conclude this discussion on this case and we the take home message that we want uh, to have with this series of radiopathological cases is that everything is interlinked we are uh, as a medical student or a resident we are in a habit of thinking as specialties that this is radiology this is pathology but with this series we want to emphasize that uh, whatever a pathologist sees and whatever a radiologist sees these are all correlated and actually you can see similar things on learn both of them together stay tuned to our channel on YouTube Dams Daily for more such interesting cases thank you very much